All right, so we're on geometric properties and statements of logic day two. So learning goals for today. You can comprehend and draw conclusions from statements of logic and conditional statements. So that's the same as yesterday. And use error analysis to determine the flaws in the conclusion that was made. So basically, you're going to be looking at things and saying, is this actually true? Or is it 100% true? Because for some of these, for all of these, they have to be 100% true. It has to be a true statement. So error analysis of conditional statements. So when you write a conditional statement, it needs to be done in a way that makes sense. So in ex what I mean by that is um, you want to determine what part is the hypothesis and what part is the conclusion. We touched on that a little bit already. Um, and you basically ask yourself, which has to occur when the other happens? That's the conclusion. So also, when determining if a conclusion is accurate, you need to ensure that no assumptions are being made. So you can't assume something, all right? Um, that's really important. So let's look at the first example. So your classmate rewrote the statement, you go to the grocery store every Monday as this conditional statement. If you go to the grocery store, then it is Monday. So what's wrong with that? And then correct it. So first of all, look at this. It says you go to the grocery store every Monday. Um, and you look at this statement, it says if you go to the grocery store, then, it's mon then it is Monday. So you're basically saying if you go to the grocery store, you only go on Mondays, period, end of story. And does this necessarily, uh, is that implied by that? And the answer is no, because um, it's written backwards. So basically, you want to write it, if it is Monday, then you go to the grocery store. It's not to say that you can't go another day, just that when it's Monday, you always go. You may go, you know, you need some milk or something, you go out there. Um, basically, if it says that you are doing something, okay, that's usually the hypothesis. So when you see that, you want to make sure that that's the second part that follows that then statement, okay? Now, could I say something where it goes in the same order? Sure. If I said every Monday you go to the grocery store, then it would still be this. You're not always reversing it. It's just whatever you do is usually because of something else. Okay, that's usually dependent on, the, in this case, it's dependent on the day. So just be aware of that. Second example, classmate makes the following statements. If you get good grades, then you'll get into a good college. Okay, Lisa is not going to college, so Lisa did not get good grades. Is your classmate's conclusion true? Why or why not? Um, it's not to say that it's it might not be true, but remember, for something to be true, it has to be definitely true. Now, conclusion's not true because there could be other reasons that Lisa did not go to college. Maybe she's going in the military, she got good grades. Doesn't necessarily mean that because um, she's not going to college that her not getting good grades is the reason. It's just saying, if you get good grades, so that's the hypothesis, you will get into a good college, that's the conclusion. The converse of that, you know, basically flipping it around and saying the opposite isn't necessarily true. So we make assumptions about our grades. So the big thing to take away from this, don't make assumptions, all right? Um, ask yourself, like, if you go back to that other one with the grades, is there other reasons that this could be happening, all right? And that's it for today. Um, have a good one. And uh, we're almost halfway through the semester already. Hard to believe. So take care, guys.